Uh, as it is stated in the precious garland of Madhyamika, it says that, uh, in fact, Nagarjuna told the king, if you practice generosity and give an offering to your people often and practice uh, beneficial actions to your people, then they would be very joyful. Uh, which means this kind of action are just like uh, the sugar. And if the king has to practice some wrathful or adapt some wrathful actions in order to help others, maybe it may appear to be tough. But because of the sweet actions that you've been doing to people, such as offering and such as generosity and beneficial actions, people would still consider you as a wonderful king because uh, you would Com you would combine the uh, wrathful or tough actions as well as generous and kind actions to everyone. Just like some of our supervisors, some of uh, the team leaders and so on, maybe some of them likes to criticize others, uh, but they also practice generosity and they, uh, they are very helpful to others and so on. Therefore, in general, they are still quite well liked. In our lifetime, we have all different kinds of experience and many different kinds of events would happen. So just like to form or to make um, a, a medicine pill, uh, you should enjoy the bitter medicine because the bitter medicine is beneficial to the illness. Uh, if the bitter medicine is beneficial to your illness, and therefore you should take it. If the uh, critical words are difficult to, to listen, to be listened by your ears, but beneficial to you, then you should listen to it. I think that's what we usually say, say in our world as well. So sometimes maybe it seems to be tough, it seems to be cruel, it seems to be difficult to, to uh, accept wholeheartedly, but from the long pers the bigger perspective, um, uh, in the long term, it will be beneficial to you, therefore you should accept it, just like we should take surgery or do acupunctures um, uh, to get a cure for your health, and uh, you would still endure the, in the temporary pain. For the same reason, the temporary suffering is difficult to endure. However, it may appear to be tough, but if you mix it together with the actual practice, the method of practice, then in the long run, the suffering won't harm you. Rather, it will be beneficial beneficial to you. I'm not sure if you've heard of this kind of profound teachings before. Uh, maybe it's a very new, uh, a, a very new uh, attempt, uh, something really uh, fresh for you. But just as I said, maybe at the beginning, it's just like how we uh, first had a sip of coffee or tried the dark chocolate. You probably are not quite used to the, some elements, but eventually you get a Addicted. Uh, I remember that one of my uh, relatives, when I took him to uh, Chengdu and uh, we had bitter melon in uh, a Chengdu restaurant, he never had bitter melon before and he tasted it and, uh, and um, spit it out and he said he hated it. But after a few years, he started really liking bitter melon. Just like that. Uh, because I think sometimes in life uh, there are people who like the flavor of bitterness. Maybe at the beginning it doesn't taste good, but eventually you get more used to it and uh, you started to taste more flavors in it. And eventually you probably stopped liking sweets. Anyhow, sweets are not very healthy. So just like that, that's the kind of uh, practice we should adapt, we should joyfully uh, uptake the, uh, the suffering. Following this line, 
follow this line of thought over and over and very thoroughly and get used to the happiness, uh, the happy state of mind that it brings. So we should familiarize ourselves with this uh, contemplation. I think majority of time, in fact, it is really our mind. If someone has a strong intention to practice uh, or to uh, strong intention of enjoying the uh, bitterness, I think that person can definitely put that suffering or bitterness into practice, uh, just like the just like the um, uh, the suffering, if you have strong faith of the Dharma, maybe at the beginning you will feel a little bit suffering in terms of your uh, body or mind, but you can definitely accept it, even if it's something that is very difficult to endure for the mundane beings. I've read uh, Master Neng Hai's biography. I'm not sure if you've read it. I think um, it, it would be really great if you can read into, uh, if you can read his biography. Lots of great masters, such as uh, Master uh, Neng Hai and Master Fa Zun, when he went, they all wanted to study in Japan, but then there are some masters told, uh, told them that, in fact, the Dharma in Japan is not as good as Tibet. There are so many translated uh, translated sutras as well as pith instructions. And then uh, Master Neng Hai made the aspiration to study in the uh, Tibetan plateau. Unlike now, at that time, uh, Tibet is not very peaceful. There were so many conflicts and uh, uh, due to different, uh, due to different um, uh, ethnic as well as political issue. Um, and then he came to the calm area uh, after many difficulties. There was a great master around the age of 80 whom prostrated all the way from uh, Lhasa to Mount Wutai. He has a great uh, inner realization. And then at that time, uh, he said, because of my age, I think it is best that if you can go to Lhasa. And it was quite a treacherous road to uh, seek for a, the genuine Dharma. Unlike practitioners nowadays, they would say that, oh, it's so terrible, I don't have fresh water, I can't buy vegetable. It's really, it's, it really uh, is it really is uh, uh, not a very happy or good situation, but really look at the past, m the masters from the past. They would carry the tents and tampa and uh, uh, lots of uh, uh, their belongings and they would walk all the way. And then afterwards they reached Ch uh, Chengdu, which was already two months from then. They encountered wild animals and bandits, and they went into areas where even the hand people can't enter, uh, had never uh, even uh, had never even been to so all sorts of things but they with the dharma in mind uh, with their shoes all uh, all broken they had to walk on thistles and thorns so halfway through, I think maybe they are really quite trained. Um, they only took about a month from uh, Chengdu to Lhasa. So altogether from Kameria to Lhasa, it took them three months to arrive. That was about 1928. They were quite discriminated at the time, in fact. They couldn't beg for alms or they couldn't uh, receive the genuine dharma or pith instruction. Uh, I don't think they even received lots of dharma at that time. They then went to India. So at that time, uh, they received some teachings 
Only on the second second round, uh, they received teachings mainly on uh, Buddhist logic as well as um, clear uh, sort of uh, clear realization. So the reason of telling this story is if someone fell in love with a profound dharma, with a profound teaching then throughout the whole process what whatever and however painful it could be in terms of uh, physical uh, in terms of body and mind I think they can still transcend that suffering they can still use that suffering that is the genuine love towards Mahayana Buddhism so if you genuinely love esoteric teaching uh, in order to receive it I think you can definitely have that kind of uh, strength to go through what Ever ex uh, difficulties, just like when a mundane being fall in love with someone, uh, they would, they don't mind to give up many things uh, for them. It is for the same reason. So we should uh, deeply and re repeatedly to contemplate on the teachings within, to practice on the joyful mind to receive it.